Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here, and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. And as you can probably tell, it's very dark. It's late in the evening, and I don't have any other time to film this, so I wanted to get it filmed. Um, but yes, it is quite late, and obviously, like I said, the lighting is not great, but you can still see me, and so hopefully, you don't mind. There's going to be a little glare in my glasses, which is going to annoy me, but hopefully it doesn't annoy you too much. Um, but yes, so in the month of June, I month of June I read eleven books. I um, which was three thousand two hundred and twenty one pages, and it was an average rating of three point five. I read three fantasy, three mystery, three non fiction, one contemporary, and one horror. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty good reading month if I'm all honest. But there was quite a lot of short books in this month. Um, but yes, let's get started and I'll talk about them. So I've put the light on, so hopefully the lighting is a bit better. Who knows? I'm trying. So I, the first book I read this month I can't actually talk about because it's part of a secret project that I'm doing that will be out in a few months. So I'm not going to talk about it, but I will tell you. I read it. Um, the next book, so the second book I read was actually a short story. AJ asked me to, well basically a few months ago AJ mentioned to me something about HP Lovecraft and I didn't really know what he was talking about and because I've never read any of it and um, he decided, or well, he said to me, oh you should read some. So I ordered a massive book. I don't have it here. It's upstairs and I'm not going to bring it downstairs because it's huge. I ordered this huge edition of every H.P. Lovecraft short story and novel ever written in one big edition. And so I read the first story of that which was called The Beast in the Cave and it was I believe 11 pages so it's not very long. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I kind of I would say, I don't even know if I could say I enjoyed it, I would say I appreciated it, but I also, I'm aware that it's the first ever H.P. Lovecraft story, and I believe he actually wrote this when he was 14. Um, it basically is about, what it sounds like, it's about a man in a cave, um, and he comes across a beast, it's dark, and he doesn't know what's going on, and it's kind of about what happens. Like I said, it's 11 pages, it's not going to be a really in-depth story. The one thing I will say is I'm I'm really going to have to get used to um, H.P. Lovecraft's writing because some of his writing was very convoluted and he use, he likes to use a lot of words to say a very small thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, but it was interesting. It definitely kept me reading. So um, yeah, I'm interested to read some more. Uh, but this one was good for now and I gave it a three star. Next up was the first buddy read that I've ever done with Charlotte from Books and Bargains, who I would implore you to go and watch because I absolutely love Charlotte's channel. Um, it was When the Lights Go Out by Mary Kubica, and unfortunately, I really hated this book. We both, I think, only finished reading this because we were buddy reading it, um, but I don't think we would have otherwise. This is pretty terrible. This is my second Mary, P Mary Kubica book. That's a hard thing to say. Mary Kubica book. And I don't know that I'm going to read anything else from her because, oh my goodness me. Um, this follows a girl named Jessie Sloan who is um, getting her life back on track after her mother. Um, she's been caring for her mother who's been very sick. And her mother dies and she's now... Um, try she's just now discovered that the name Jessie Sloan or the person Jessie Sloan um, is, died 17 years ago and is not actually... A person any longer so she then has to try and figure out what's going on I enjoyed this book to a point there was some weird stuff in it Charlotte mentioned that there's a line in this where it talks about her period as being like little diamonds on her underwear and I just don't think that periods generally tend to be that delicate. I think the way that it was talked about was really weird and kind of like fetishistic. Um, is that a word? Did I make that up? Maybe. Um, and then I'll just tell, say the ending. I'm not going to obviously say what it is, but I should have known when I first, I put this in a TBR a few months ago and Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books said to me, you need to film your reaction to the ending. Now I didn't do that and I kind of wish I had because the ending of this, there is like, it's so lazy and I just, I don't know. 
I can't even I can't even explain why I hated this so much. This one was definitely a two star. It's a book I kind of wish I didn't read, um, but I'm kind of I'm glad I read it. I suppose um, in that it's now free to not be on my shelves anymore, and also. It's a book that I'm glad I read with Charlotte because it was fun to read, um, like as part of a um, as part of a buddy read. But yeah, I'm not sure I want to continue on and read any more from her. Before I talk about the next two books, I have to address something which is pretty drastic and has been definitely hitting the booktube um Twitter specifically. Has been really um, is where I've seen a lot of this stuff anyway. Um, the next two books that I want to talk about today are by J.K. Rowling um, and obviously she has recently made very anti-trans um, comments on Twitter and she is continuing to say that she's not apologised for what she said and I have to say that I completely abhor what she said. I do not um, agree with her in any way at all and I just think that I would like to support any of my... Um, trans friends uh anybody who's been affected by this um and i like i say i will continue to try to do better in terms of educating myself um for this as well and i do just want to say that i will no longer be mentioning jk rowling's books um on my channel um i'm just going to briefly mention like what i've read um this month i'm not going to go into really any detail because i don't want to give her any airspace really um but i will just say i'll just pull it from here um i was in the middle um of reading lethal white by robert galbraith which is obviously jk rowling pseudonym um i read this in the month i gave it a four star and i really loved it i'm not saying i won't continue to read the books I would get them from the library rather than actually buy them because I don't want to give her any of my money and I'm definitely gonna still probably revisit Harry Potter in the future because it's a comfort for me but I am not going to be talking about it I don't want to give it any airtime and um if I read it that'll be for me and I might just very like vaguely mention it um in terms of like I've read it and then move on but yeah I read this one I'm not going to go into any detail because, I, like I said, I just don't want to give her the airtime. So then the next book after that that I read was the Harry Potter the prequel. It's like a four-page um, thing on um, online, I think. I read it. I gave it a three-star. It wasn't anything exciting. Again, I'm not going to go into any detail. The next book I read, I read from my library and it was a um, Kindle or like a library app, Libby app uh, book. And this was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And I ended up DNFing this one. I really did not get into it. Um, I've heard good things about E. Lockhart in general, but I think this particular book wasn't for me. I do own another one of hers. I think it's Genuine Fraud, is that what it's called? Um, so I'm interested in trying, trying that one and seeing how I go with it. Um, but I ended up DNFing We Were Liars at 242 pages, which annoyingly is quite the way, a good, like a good chunk of the way through. But I just didn't like it. I think I couldn't connect to the characters and I just didn't really understand what was happening in it, to be honest with you. I'm not really sure I got what they were talking about. I felt like there was lots of characters, but I didn't really care about any of them. And yeah, I just couldn't really connect. So yeah, this one was not for me, unfortunately. Also, I should just say in one of my, I think it was my mental health books on my TBR video, um, I mentioned that I'd been told that We, we Were Liars has mental health representation. And as far as I could tell from what I read, there wasn't, just in case anybody is trying to pick it up based on a recommendation or, or me saying about it yeah as far as I can tell it didn't I had been told in the comments of that video that there wasn't really any but Goodreads told me there was so I just assumed but yeah as far as I could tell there wasn't anything next up was a book that I was bought by the lovely Victoria from what Victoria read and um she bought this for me I think um she bought this one for me and I've been wanting to read it for a little while and I've finally picked it up that is the five the untold lives of the women killed by jack the ripper by hallie rubenhold and this is a non-fiction book which as you all know i've been loving non-fiction recently but this one follows the women who were murdered by jack the ripper um and they it says they are famous for the same thing though they never met they um and it, it talks about their the only thing what they had in common was the year of their murders um and although their murderer was never created his name is more well known um in 
society in general and I just found this to be really really interesting I ended up giving this one a four star and I really really enjoyed the read it's definitely something that you have to stick with it's not really like, it's not a fast-paced book um but it basically literally goes through each one of the five women and it talks about their lives and how they got to be at the place where they were murdered it briefly mentions the fact that they were murdered at the end but it doesn't really go into any like massive detail which I really enjoyed I think it's really good to see you know their history um and yeah I just I found it to be really fascinating it talked a lot about the workhouses and just about that time period in general so yeah it was a really good non-gory uh non-fiction book that I really really enjoyed Next up is one that I'm really excited about. This is a book that I was actually sent by the author herself um, and I was contacted by this author um, who asked me if I'd be interested in reading her book and it came out in July and I honestly could not have been happier when I read this. I absolutely loved it. It's another non-fiction so I had, to, like I said, I've been really enjoying non-fiction recently but it is Breakfast at Bronzefield by Sophie Campbell and this book is so, so good. This basically follows Sophie Campbell who goes to HMP Bronzefield which is the UK's largest women's prison and she's forced into signing an NDA when she arrives and there's lots of talk about um, her, her getting extra time on her sentence if she does certain things. Um, it She talks a lot about the inside the prison structure and the way that um, people were treated. Um, she talks. Her main thing is that she talks about um, rehabilitation and education and the fact that because she had degrees she was treated slightly differently or sometimes seen differently in prison people always assuming that um, the women who were in prison were uneducated um, because even though that's not necessarily the case um, she doesn't talk in here about the reason why she was in prison but I kind of like I, I liked that because I think firstly it's nobody's business and secondly it doesn't matter what she did to get to go to prison like she is talking about what happened and how she's then like what she did in prison and how that affected her. I also like the fact that although there's not a, um, a massive amount of talk in here about it, um, Sophie Campbell is a black woman and she talks a lot about her, or not a lot, and she talks um, a bit about her, um, you know, dealing with um, different people of different races and how she was treated as the race that she is, I mean, how it was always assumed that one of the first things that people say to her um, when they find out that she's been in prison is um, like, how was it being, you know, um, did you just have black friends in prison or, you know, that kind of thing. And I just think the whole thing was really interesting. Although it doesn't, like I say, talk a lot about that, I think it was a definitely an interesting element that was in there. I would 100% recommend that you read this book. Thank you so much to Sophie for sending this to me. Um, this it was so, so interesting to read. And if you're interested in, at all in the prison system or you have any interest in reading about it, you definitely need to pick up this book. It's so good. <laughs> Next up, we have What Really Happened in Peru by Cassandra Clare and Sarah Reese Brennan. Um, I mentioned in my last week's video, which was for my May wrap up, that I ended, I DNF this book initially, but I've decided to read all of the, um, well, the Cassandra Clare Shadowhunter World books in order. So the first one I had to read was What Happened in Peru, which was the first book in the Magnus Bane um, Chronicles. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this one. It was probably a four star for me. I thought the story was really fun. Um, it shows Magnus Bane's kind of like quirky and fun side. Um, it's basically about the reason why he... It starts off basically saying like, the reason why Magnus Bane was kicked out of Peru or wasn't allowed to go back to Peru um, or was banned from Peru was, um, it wasn't this reason, it wasn't this reason and it goes through all of the like funny things that he's done. Um, it's a lot about his relationship with Ragnar Fell which I think is really interesting and yeah I thought it was a really fun little insight into Magnus as a character. Um, so yeah I really enjoyed it, like I said gave it a four stars. It was only I think about 65 pages. But yeah, it was really interesting and I would recommend that you read it. I definitely am looking forward to continuing on and reading the whole Shadowhunters world through. And it was fun to read like the oldest um, part of the Shadowhunter world. Uh, yeah, so I enjoyed that. Then the penultimate book that I read in 
June was um, Ma Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan or Riordan. I never know how you say his surname. Um, this book is the fourth book in the Percy Jackson series and I only have one left to read. Um, this one I think I gave a three star. I don't love this book like it's not my favorite of them it's like a it's a fine book but it's definitely not something that I would rush out to reread um I am really excited I believe there's an adaptation of Percy Jackson coming that um Rick Riordan has really talked about and like endorsed because I mean we all know the movies were not great or the movie was not great um, but this basically, like I said, I can't really talk too much about it because it is the fourth book, but it's a continuation of Percy Jackson, who is half boy, half god. Um, he's the son of Poseidon. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting. Um, it was, you know, a fun read, but I, like I say, I wouldn't say it was one that I would rush out to read again but I definitely am interested in reading the last one so I can finish out the series and then the final book that I read this month was another one from my library app and that was Finding Me by Michelle Knight. Michelle Knight was one of the three women who was kidnapped by Ariel Castro and kept in his house as a sex slave um, for I believe 13 years and she is writing her story about what happened, how she dealt with being captured the things that happened to her and now what she's doing um, and how she's you know dealing with life on the outside again i found this to be such an interesting story this one i gave a four star i really really love the fact that she's been able to write a book um and she's been able to tell her side and she's been able to put herself out there because yeah i really really enjoyed this one i would highly recommend that you <laughs> read this book this one was really fun to read on the um library app and i'm really glad that they had it um it's definitely not it's definitely one that i want more people to read because i feel like not enough people have um and yeah i think that it's yeah it was just it was an interesting book in general and i would recommend that you read it so there you are guys that is all the books that i read in the month of june um let me know in the comments down below what you read in june and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you next time for another video bye guys take care